Chapter 4. The head and locked the kitchen window. It slid open with just a couple of squeaks. And I was inside the Amos house, crouched down like a cat burglar. Quick as a rabbit, I looked under the table to see if they'd move my suitcase. It was still there. I got a whole lot calmer when I picked it up, and it was the right weight. I didn't think they had taken anything out of it. I couldn't be sure until I looked inside, but I could do that later. I got a whole lot calmer when I picked it up, and it was the right weight. I didn't think they had taken anything out of it. I couldn't be sure until I looked inside, but I could do that later. I took in a deep breath and looked over at the ice box to see if the shotgun was still there. I let all the air out in a big puff when I saw it. Chucks, you think that with the Amoses being so doggone mean, they worry about leaving a big old gun like that out in the open. What if one of their visitors got real mad at them about something? I unlocked the back door and set my suitcase on the first step of the porch so I can make a quick getaway after I was through paying these Amoses back. I opened the screen door real quiet and went back into the house. Fair is fair. Amoses deserve what they were going to get. I can't all the way blame Todd for giving me trouble, though. If I had a regular home with a mother and a father, I wouldn't be too happy about other kids living in my house either. Being unhappy about it is one thing, but torturing the kids who are there even though they don't want to be there is another. It was my job to make sure other kids who didn't know where their mothers and fathers were didn't have to put up with Todd. My heart started jumping around in my stomach as soon as I reached out for the shotgun. It was a lot longer and heavier than I thought it would be. I lifted it and felt how solid the smooth brown wood was against my shoulder. With it up close to my face, like this, I could smell the gray metal of the barrel and the gun oil Mr. Amos used on it. I aimed the gun at the stove and pretended I was shooting at an elephant or a dragon or a tiger or best of all, Todd. I imagined how it would feel to creep up to his bed while he was sleeping and put the shotgun barrel right in his nose. After that, I'd have to do some quick moving to get the grown-up Amoses. Unless they were real sound sleepers, the shotgun going off in Todd's room would give them a clue that something was going on. I lowered the gun. These things were too dangerous to play with or to take chances with. That's why the first part of my revenge plan was to get this gun out of the way. If something went wrong and the Amoses woke up, I didn't want them rushing down to the kitchen to get the gun. I knew they'd shoot me in a flash and tell the home it was an accident. I took the gun outside and put it on the back porch in a corner where they wouldn't be able to see until daytime. I felt a lot better when it was out of my hands. When I was back in the kitchen, I started opening cupboards looking for the drinking glasses. The first one I opened had the jelly jar they'd given me to drink out of at supper time. I walked over to the sink and turned on one of the spigots. These Amoses had hot water running right into the house. I let it run for a second to warm up and put a dish rag in the bottom of the sink so the splashing wasn't too loud. Water was good and hot. I stuck the jelly jar underneath until it was filled to the brim. I started down the hall. Todd's door came open easy as anything. Tiptoed over to his bed. He was deep asleep and his hands were crossed on his chest like he was ready for the graveyard. I dipped my middle finger in the water. It felt like this perfect temperature. I held my breath and picked up one of Todd's chubby hands. One of the older boys at the home told me if you dip someone's hand in a warm glass of water whilst they were asleep, they didn't have any choice but to pee the bed. It's something about chemistry and biology making some valve in your guts open up and whoop, zoop, sloop, and you got a wet bed. I started to dip Todd's fingers in the water, but I couldn't dip more than two fingers at a time. Todd's bed stayed as dry as the desert. I tried holding Todd's hand flat and poured water over it, but it still didn't wet the bed. Finally, I decided to just pour the water on his pajama pants. I pulled the blanket and sheet down and emptied the jar. His face twitched a couple times, and for a minute, it looked like his eyes were going to come open, but they stayed shut. He smiled, and the warm water from the jelly jar opened the little valve up, and whoop, zoop, sloop, he soaked his sheets. I tiptoed out the room and down the hall and out the door. My favorite saying in the whole world is, he who laughs last laughs best. So I put my hand over my mouth 
and whispered, ha, ha, ha. I picked up my suitcase and walked to the street. Man, I was on the 1 a.m. I was just like public enemy number one. If J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI saw me now, I'd be in some real serious hot water.